Give them some food yourselves. It's a command. It's an order. Jesus is giving the disciples direction. Give them some food yourselves. I don't remember how often I had to go with my mother, but it seemed way too many times that I would have to go with her into town. Now, don't get me wrong, I loved going into town. I loved being able to get off the farm. I loved being able to get away from the cows and the work and the animals and the chores. I loved to be able to go into town, whether it was with my mother or my dad, it didn't matter. Just getting off the farm was always a treat. Yet, there was the time always that I had to go with my mother into town, and it involved grocery shopping. Wasn't a big fan. Not because I had anything against buying groceries, because actually, I find great enjoyment in that. Seeing people, getting a chance to visit in aisle eight or two or wherever we might find ourselves. But the reason I remember as a child not wanting to go with my mother to the grocery store to get the groceries is because I was always embarrassed. I was embarrassed. Because the reason why my mother had to take one of us kids with her is she needed more than one cart. (laughs) She needed two. And they were always overflowing. The carts were full of food and provisions. And what always amazed me was that we needed two carts. But then, think about it, there were ten kids and two parents involved. A lot of mouths to feed. And there were always two carts full, actually heaping over with groceries and some tucked underneath as well. And I was always amazed at how it would take us two full carts of groceries because after all, we provided for most of our food right there on the land. We had our own milk. There was no milk in the grocery cart. There was no bread in the grocery cart. There was no eggs in the grocery cart. Why? My mother had all of that at home because of the animals and the fields that would provide for all of that. It was the staples, the oil and the flour and the sugar and the like. I was always embarrassed at how many groceries it took to feed our family. And so I always carry with me that image going down the aisles with my mother when I hear the predicament that the disciples are in in today's gospel. Keep in mind, there's not just 10 plus 2 adults, there's 5,000 people. And Jesus tells them to give some food and feed them themselves. And so I'm trying to equate how many grocery carts would that take to feed 5,000 people? And how much more embarrassed I would be at how many carts that would be. My goodness, we would need families to go in and push all the grocery carts to be able to provide all that is needed. And yet, and yet the great irony of this story that is so familiar to all of us, it's familiar and, of course, it's important because all four gospel writers tell us this story a little bit differently, each of them, but nonetheless, they all want us to know about the story of the multiplication of loaves and fish. And they want us to know this, that the great irony of the story is that Jesus is telling them to feed the crowd themselves and they're worried about whether or not where where they're going to get all this food and yet right in their midst, right in their midst is the bread of life. He's standing right in front of them. But as they're busy taking inventory of what they got, they conclude they got five loaves and two fish. That's all. Five plus two. It equals seven. A number that is symbolic in Scripture of perfection, of wholeness, of sacredness, of the bread of life, who's standing right in their midst. 
And isn't that true of all of us? As we hunger and as we experience the hunger of others in our world, in our society, in our community, as people are hungry for all sorts of things, as you and I try to take inventory to figure out what it is that we've got to be able to share with others and what it is that perhaps other people have that they might be able to share with us, we, of course, always limit ourselves and we're always focused on scarcity and, of course, perhaps we're even embarrassed to be able to acknowledge the fact that, that we ain't got much and there's so much hunger out there and we have so little to offer to be able to satisfy that hunger. And yet, we fail to remember that right in our midst is the bread of life. Not only in our midst, but the bread of life dwells and resides within each and every one of us. My friends, in a few moments, when you and I come forward to receive the body and the blood of Christ, when we put out our hands or our tongue, whatever it is, our preference, to receive this sacred and this holy meal, Jesus doesn't simply dissolve and go away as he passes our tongue and goes into our stomachs. No. Here we become, as we sang in today's opening hymn, here we become what we eat. You see, my friends, as we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi of the body and blood of Christ, what we celebrate is the fact that, again, Jesus has chosen to take on our human flesh and form. And the incarnation didn't just happen 2,000 years ago, but it's happening right here, right now, through you and through me. We, together, are the body of Christ. We receive it in a few moments so that we might become it and live it and share it and give it freely to others. That's what this feast is about. That's what the Eucharist is about. Give them some food yourselves. Jesus commands us, he directs us, and he invites us to do that each and every day. And we don't have to worry about whether or not we have enough. We don't even need to take an inventory because the bread of life is within us, nourishing us so that we might then be food and nourishment for others. After they all ate and were satisfied, there were 12 wicker baskets of fragments gathered up. Any idea why there was 12 and not 11? Or a baker's dozen, 13? Why 12 wicker baskets? Come on! Give yourself some credit. Why 12? The 12 disciples. Ah. So you see, you and I have been given a grocery cart, known back then as a wicker basket. And the grocery cart, in whatever aisle we find ourselves in, is overflowing with abundance and grace and peace, and forgiveness, and life, and love, and the very presence of our Lord, found in all of those virtues and values. And we are invited to take that wicker basket, that grocery cart, and push it through the aisles where we find ourselves going each and every day. Because there are people that we will encounter along the way, and they are hungry. And you and I, we need to give them some food ourselves.